For the past three years, the team at Ubisoft Quebec has embarked on their own epic voyage, creating the world of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. As their journey nears its end, we sat down with members of the development team to discuss recreating the classical settings of ancient Greece, engaging in all-out army warfare, arming players with a first civilization artifact, and for the first time in the series, putting player choice at the forefront of Assassin's Creed. Odyssey is the second step in the transformation of Assassin's Creed into a full-blown RPG. So the big themes of Assassin's Creed Odyssey are the big themes of Assassin's Creed, the franchise. Freedom versus order, that first civilization, that mystery of where we came from. Since we're the oldest Assassin's Creed uh, has ever been in time period, we're able to really explore those, and I think it'll be a super exciting experience for players. Choice was absolutely one of the first things that we, we started thinking about and we wanted in the game. Not just in the dialogue system, obviously, but within the structure of the game. Especially being able to choose your character. So this is what's going to feel really, really different for players this year. So there is a base storyline that is consistent, that there are a lot of big choices in it, but there's also these small stories that you don't know where they're gonna lead. And you know, sometimes it leads in romance, sometimes it leads in a bloodbath, and so, you know, whatever. So uh, and sometimes in a charming relationship with a new friend. The things you make decisions about within quests are going to have an impact later on. You were mine, and Kira took you from me. Greece is about conversations. We wanted to leverage that as a way to interact with history. So if I'm interacting with a historical character, I want to be able to ask questions. I want to be able to know who he is. What brings you to Thelos? We cannot have a conversation with Socrates and make players feel that they are really reliving history without choice. Am I gonna save this guy? Am I, am I gonna let him die? So asking myself questions as a player that are very deep and that could impact the choices, yes, at the end. What exactly is justice? I think it's interesting to build relationships that are not just stopping at a quest. That sense of interest, you know, like that, that sense of seduction, that sense of playfulness with it as well. <laughs> very poetic for someone covered in blood. I like it. It's not everybody that can be seduced in the game, you know, so, but there are occasions where you will meet people that, you know, like, the, when the little heart appears, it's like, oh, I don't know, that dude or that girl, you know, I'm, what am I gonna do, so. I also found this. But we also have friendships that get built over time in, in, in the game. Two sides of the same coin. Since Assassin's Creed Odyssey takes place during the Peloponnesian War, you better believe you're gonna to get to partake in massive battles between hundreds of Athenian and Spartan soldiers. We knew we needed to recreate that and to give the player that opportunity to engage in these, these huge battles with hundreds of soldiers on each side. And you're going to use every ability you have, uh, every ounce of strength and adrenaline that you can muster to, to face off against these huge, huge battles. And then once you complete them, you're gonna get great rewards out of it, as well as changing who owns that area of the world. So it's not just this huge battle, but it's also consequences within the world itself. The special abilities are a way of expanding what abilities have always been, which is a way to, to more customize your playstyle. For us, we push it even farther because we use the, the broken spear of Leonidas as that access to even bigger and better abilities. So the spear of Leonidas is Leonidas' spear, obviously but it's also a first civilization artifact. In the past, you've maybe had the Apple of Eden for a little bit. We give this to you for the entire game and you upgrade it, you make it better. Uh, you get to get more abilities because of it and because of its connection to you, which we're gonna develop throughout the story. Being 2,500 years ago, the oldest uh, we've ever gone in Assassin's Creed to where the, that connection to the first civilization is the strongest it's ever been in the franchise. I think choosing the Peloponnesian War as a backdrop was an excellent choice. It's a crucial moment in history who deeply impact our civilization today. It's also an opposition between democracy and tyranny. Everything is interconnected in ancient Greece. Politics, religion, and social behavior, it's all connected. And at the same time, when you go visit Greece, None of it is still standing, or most of it is, you know, not there. So we have to go do the research and bring that back alive. In fact, that's something we've learned throughout our research, that they find, like, color pigment on statues and temples. So using that knowledge to our advantage, which was a, 
art direction blessing, kind of, because we could add colors on almost all man-made structures. So that's why if you play the game, you'll see there's tons of color on almost everything. Uh, we have an uh, expert in the studio in, with the substance designer, which did an amazing job re reproducing all those marbles, uh, gold and trims, uh, mosaic on the floor, fresco on the walls. That truly gives something, I think, I don't know, unexpected about what antiquity could have looked like that you don't even see in movies because they don't have the time to do it. When you think of Greece, what do you think first? It's probably the blue sky and the blue water. Well, for us, the water was like a, a main character. We wanted to have like the wave crashing on the shoreline with the volumetric foam also. Like that's probably the first when the Ubisoft game to have a volumetric foam. It's a good thing that foam is so detailed because you'll be making quite a bit of it as you stir things up in Odyssey's naval warfare. We're making the sea really alive uh, by bringing back naval. We have sharks, whales, it's raw, it's, it's up close. Uh, you can clean ships in two. Uh, put other ships on fire. It brings that uh, that whole uh, dynamic on the sea. Because we wanted the ship to be your, your home. It is your home base. It's where you meet uh, Barnabas, who's your, your captain and your good friend. As you add people to the ship, you, you can recruit people from the world to join your ship and travel with you. I met this character. I helped him. I recruited him. Oh, he's, he's there. Who has that? If you took a snapshot of your boat and showed your crew, I won't have the same crew as you. Nobody here will have the same crew. You're going to find them in quests. They're going to be people that you talk to and you can uh, ask them to join you on your ship. And then the other way that you're going to get them is to recruit from your enemies, from mercenaries, from uh, cool looking uh, characters that you might see in the world or people that have really good stats. Making it not just about, okay, here's a bunch of enemies in front of me, I need to wipe them all out. It was more of, okay, here's a bunch of guys. Ooh, that guy's really interesting. I'm going to go get him. And one of the things that I like the most about what we've done is that we really take a step back and put it in the hands of the player. Well, for me, this team that I have now at Ubisoft Quebec, and we've been growing this team since 2005 to be, and this is the, our ultimate goal, was to build a game like Odyssey. The, the word Odyssey for our game really comes out as the thing, you know, like you'll be going on an epic journey and that's what we wanted. You from a mercenary to a Greek legend, you know, the Greek hero, that's what Assassin's Creed Odyssey is all about, so. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, available October 5th.